Thank you, Justin and Helen. My summation of what our earlier guests have said is that everyone gets depressed at one time or the other. But I wonder, does it mean that every time I'm sad, I'm depressed? I don't think so. And I always wonder, am I allowed to feel despondent, sad, helpless, downcast, or even defeated once in a while? From what our earlier guest Bukola said, no, I'm not. I am allowed to feel that way. It doesn't mean I'm depressed. They say depression is a mental health condition, but I beg to differ. My understanding is that there is a difference between being clinically depressed and feeling despondent from time to time. One is a mental health disorder, and the other is what us digital age emotionally charged humans call being in your feelings or having the blues. Doing my research on this topic has ended up confusing me even further, but luckily for me, the www.mayoclinic.org site simplifies depression as a mood disorder that causes a persistent feeling of sadness and loss of interest, also called major depressive disorder or clinical depression. Depression affects how a person feels, thinks, and behaves, and can lead to a variety of emotionally and physical problems. But this still led to more questions for me, some of which have been answered by Bukola and Tammy Dio, and others that will be answered in my conversation today with Mr. Akanimo Ekong, a serial trainer and performance coach with over 25 years of experience in HR, operations, performance, and leadership. Akanimo has an MBA from Lagos Business School, is a member of the International Coaching Federation, as well as an internationally certified transformational coach and an accredited personality and emotional intelligence assessor. He's also a certified mental health counselor, has a diploma in counseling, and is currently studying for a diploma in youth counseling. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. It uh, truly is a pleasure to have you here with me today. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. And thanks Wonderful. for having me. Awesome, awesome. So, I really just want to understand better. Sure. The I words see. anxiety and depression, what's the difference? Thank you, the commonly asked question. Um, anxiety many times focuses on what you're experiencing now and the, in the future. Okay. So, the person is, has some fear or nervousness about some experience that he's, he or she is facing. Okay. It may be, for some people, it may be boarding a plane. Okay. For some people, it may be speaking on air or, you know, public speaking. Mm. Um, so the person is, person is afraid or concerned about something that he or she is experiencing now or about to uh, experience. Um, with depression, it's more around internalizing how you see. So you're, the person is being very self-critical of himself or herself. Um, and and how he sees the environment. So you 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 see th you say things like, "I'm a loser. I can never make it. I'm not good enough. People don't like me." So you're being very self-critical mm -hmm. of yourself. You're being very critical of the environment, and how you experience things. So two people, two different people, will see something from a totally different perspective. Oh, this thing happened to me. Oh, therefore I'm a failure. Mm -hmm. Oh, this thing happened to me. And the second person says, "Okay, that means I need to try harder." So. Right. Depression, you totally, you, you, you know, you internalize, you internalize. it and, and, and feel worse about yourself and how it's, so in terms of how it's treated, the medical, the uh, mental health practitioner sometimes is the same things that you do. And mm. I think I will share some of that later on. Uh, sometimes maybe medication, mm. talk therapy, but they, they are, they are, they are different. different. Okay, they wonderful. Different, yeah. Thank you so much for, for explaining that. So my summation is that depression is... A, an elongated state of melancholy. So um, to that, I now want to look at young people. Sure. Because these days, a lot of young people are getting depressed and committing suicide or going into drug addiction. Unfortunately. So um, what are the signs? that a young person is depressed? What are the things that a parent or an adult or a mentor needs to look out for? Okay, so um, the, our previous guest mentioned a couple of things. So like, like we said, where we, like we say about depression, so all of us get depressed, all of us get sad at, at yeah. some point in time. Um, your favorite team loses and then you feel sad, but most of the time for one or two days. 
you know, uh, de for you to be diagnosed as depressed, it has to be for over two weeks. Mm -hmm. And a couple of things. Um, it can be that you have feelings of unworthiness, uh, inappropriate feelings of guilt. Mm -hmm. It may be you're having difficulty concentrating or thinking, mm -hmm. uh, recurrent thoughts of suicide or death, mm -hmm. um, increase in weight, decrease in weight. So you must have at least five of these um, symptoms over a period of two weeks okay. for you to be diagnosed as depressed. Okay. Um, and as I said, that's different from the normal stresses of life where you feel bad, you're in traffic. As he mentioned you're in traffic and you get home, there's no light. Oh, you feel sad. Or your favorite team loses. Oh, you feel sad. That's mm. the normal course of life. Mm. But for you to be diagnosed as depressed, it must be for a period of two weeks. So what we say to people is, what should you look out for? Look out for little things like, you know, someone's DP normally has his picture or her picture mm. uh, and all of a sudden it goes black. Mm. We should learn to be, to care for one another. Ask, to be more sensitive. More sensitive. Why, yes. why is that? Why is this that? person yes. normally likes going out for the movies or normally likes taking selfies and all that. All of a sudden the person has they stopped. They don't do that. Why? So just, can we step out of our shell? One of the things I do is I tell people that um, when you ask somebody, how are you doing? How are you? And the person says, fine. Ask again. Right. Just say, are you sure? Because right. many times, the first answer is our normal reflex. Yes. Yeah, I'm fine. I, yeah. I did. I'm fine. We did manage. But when you ask again, the person is like, ah, honestly speaking, mm -hmm. I'm going through X, Y, Z. Yeah, I and see So that. we should just yeah. learn to be a bit more sensitive and, and, and care for one another. And, and the, the good thing about that, one of the things you've just said now is if somebody's DP changes, we're in a technology age. Everything is digital. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to pick up those signs. Very easy. You know, and if, if, if you're unsure whether that is a trigger, you wait for a period of time to see whether it changes. You know, and if it stays like that for, for a longer period than is customary for that individual, yeah. you know, then it's okay to ask questions. It or is. if the person doesn't post on Instagram when normally they would post three, four times a day. You know, those, so those are things that, those are practical things that we, exactly, can, yeah. we can do to try and help, especially our younger people who are really sure. the ones who live in the digital age. So I want to paint a scenario for you. My name is Olu. Yes, I am 25 years old. I got a first class degree from LSE and my master's from Harvard. Mm -hmm. I plan on doing a PhD when I'm 40. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I currently work at Total on the fast track to senior management. I'm painting a picture of affluence okay. or, or future affluence. Sure. My parents are rich, but currently right now I'm richer than they are. I have a good life. Mm. You know, I'm the toast of the town. All the girls want to wife me or marry me rather. Mm -hmm. You know, all the mother-in-laws love me. I'm popping champagne. So I have a good life. I drive a good car. But then you find out that I killed myself a few days ago. Mm. And you wonder why. Nobody knew that I was depressed. How, what, what do you say to that type of person? How do you, even, how do you, how do you notice that me, Olu, was actually going through depression? How do you counsel Olu's parents and loved ones that didn't know any of these things were going on. How, how, how do you help in that kind of situation? Because that is what we face on a very regular basis in the world we live in today. Sure. It's a tough one because, like you said, on the outside, everything appears to be looking good. It mm -hmm. has a fast life. Everything seems to be looking good and all that. But somewhere deep, in, deep inside him, mm. there's some hurt or there's some pain. Um, it's sometimes, I liken it sometimes to physical health where on the outside the individual looks really good, looks mm. great, you know. Mm. And, but meanwhile, somewhere inside him, something is going on. Then you find that this person got to the car park and slumped and died and you wondered, mm. why? But I just saw him upstairs. Mm. He looked good. So what do we say to people like that? So thank God for programs like this and, you know, every opportunity I have to speak out and share. Um, we, we, we come on air to, to talk to people around things like this. Um, there's, first of all, there's a lot of misconception about men, mental health. Okay. And there's a lot of stigma 
around it. Okay. So in terms of misconceptions, people don't understand certain things like, oh, depression versus getting depressed once in a while. Yes. So it's very easy for if someone comes to you and says, oh, so if Olu came to his friend to say, I'm feeling depressed, to say, come on, snap out of it. Mm. And we don't tell people to snap out of malaria. We don't tell people to very snap true. out of, very true, of, 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 of cancer. So, but because people feel that depression is, oh, come on, you just had a bad day. Your team uh, lost. So what's the big deal? So it's easy to be dismissive around that. But how, how does Olu's friend notice that my guy is depressed when in reality my guy looks as though he has an enviable life? Yeah, so... Um, as I said, you know, we said earlier about you know, looking at your DP and all that, but in, the, in Olu's case, it might really be difficult. So really, I'm, in this case, I'll be speaking to the Olus of this world mm -hmm. and saying, whoever the camera, you're not alone. Yes. And let people know that people are going through stuff like this. I've counseled yes. people in that same situation yes. who, because of a program like this on the webinar, on TV, or just an article I wrote, they're like, oh, thank God, I, I thought I was alone. Okay. I thought I was the only person that was going through stuff. Yeah. Um, so programs like this help people to know that there's nothing wrong, you're not alone. Two, the stigma out there is, is one of the biggest hindrances to people getting help. I've had situations, and you know, we're talking about young people and parenting. I've had situations where someone, uh, a teenager, maybe in his 19, 1920, is depressed and talks to his parents. Mm -hmm. Mommy, I'm feeling this way. And I've had cases where the parents are like, don't disgrace us. Don't which say this. Which is very normal, which happens a lot. God forbid. And, you know, puts the person aside. I've also seen situations where the boy is coming out of depression and the parents, he has talk, talked to the parents, and the parents have more or less held his hand, said, we're here for you, and brought him to my office to say, look, my son needs help. So, you know, Again, different, different strokes for different folks. So let me, yes. let, me, let, me, let me touch on the parent who says, God forbid, don't disgrace us. We'll pray it out of you. Let's take you to the pastor. What do you do in that situation? I take a deep breath because um, it's very frustrating. I had a situation about three, four months ago where uh, you know, someone had graduated you know, first class 2-1 and the parents were like, but, but feeling very down and really it was in a critical stage of depression. But the parents were like, don't disgrace us. No, don't do this. And because someone knew that I was a mental health practitioner, mentioned it to me. And I said, you know what? You need to, if the parents won't take action, you as a relation and all that, can you go there and, in a sense, physically drag her out of that house mm. and let her to get help? And that's mm. what happened. Mm. So we speak to parents out there to say, look, if your child is going through depression and all that, that's it. Why, why take it personal? Why say, oh, you know, you're, you're disgracing me? Again, it's a lot of ignorance and people don't know. So we're hoping that parents out there who are listening to programs like this ask their children how they are. One of the things I've seen in counseling young people between 18 to 29, and by the way, so many of them have either tried, I mean, not so many, but like maybe 30, 40% of them have considered committing suicide, yes. are going through depression. And, you know, my little, uh, if I do a little analysis, one of it is parental pressure. Okay. Pressure of, you must read this course. Now, when we were growing up, parents would say, you know what, you must either read math, you must either read engineering, medicine, pharmacy, uh, law, and I think accounting. Mm -hmm. And maybe, and we survived. Yes. But nowadays, you don't tell people in this generation, generation to read a particular course. You may not like the fact that they want to do photography or they want to be a chef, yeah. but you can guide them. You can have conversations with them. My you, sons, know, you know, you know the, in, the interesting thing about what you've just said, I, I was lucky. My family was lucky in the sense that my mother knew from an early age that her daughter is an art girl, you know. So I remember wanting to do math for A-level because I was considering doing architecture at the time. Mm. And my mother was like, you better don't go and fail. Mm. Better find another <laughs> subject that you're good at. Sure. So my parents never pushed me to do the traditional courses. However, they pushed me to work bloody hard. And I think that's usually where the difference is. Oh, a lot good. of the times, 
sometimes as parents and also as children, we don't understand that even if you're going to say you want to be a chef, what your parent is actually trying to tell you is, okay, can you show me that you're determined, that you're focused, that you're disciplined, sure. and that you have the ability to do the work that is required to be the best chef that you can be? Yeah. But the challenge now is the parent isn't communicating it like that. Yeah, they're saying and then there's a breakdown in communication. Yeah. Last week we talked about communication, and now we're talking about depression, and we're talking about the younger generation. Sure. It all kind, they're all connected. Yeah, you know. So, um, so the the thing that I I would I would I I'm getting from from what you've said is, as parents, we need to be more mindful of our children. We need to be more aware. And we need to understand our children's personality better because that understanding and the ability to communicate that we understand can be the difference between that child going into depression and then having suicidal thoughts or tendencies or actually even going all the way to commit suicide. We need, and we need to talk to them. We need to get them to see that as much as we want them to do well, let them have that comfort that even if they go out in life and mess up or make mistakes that there's still that love so many many times and a, a, a child that I, I heard of that committed suicide in a secondary school or university it was the belief that if i don't do well my parents won't love me mm. and it's we all want our children to do well but mm. we must let them see that even if they do make mistakes and all they that can still come they back can home. still come back okay so this like we had said is a giant of a topic mm. and we can talk about it forever but they've just, as usual, told me that I have five more minutes. So <laughs> what I want to ask you very quickly, um, like I do with all my guests, in three quick sentences, please give us some quick remedies and practical tips for managing depression in young people. And obviously, this will translate to older people because depression is depression regardless of age. Sure. So three short sentences, please. Um, so a couple of things. Um, so depression affects the, our brains. Uh, uh, and so there's the chemicals in the brain, brains that, you know, I won't even uh, go into now. So things like, simple things like exercise. Exercise does something, it, it, it helps to boost your endorphins in the brain. So it helps you, most people, when, after a good workout, they feel much better. So can we go out more, exercise, take a walk? Um, also things like celebrating wins. So break down tasks and accomplishments, do something and then celebrate yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. Big wins or small wins? It can even be small wins. Let's start with small wins. So whether you're taking, whether you're taking a walk or you're doing a task, break it down into smaller chunks. When you finish this small chunk, celebrate yourself and all that, things like that. Um, we talk about there's a, a hormone called oxytocin. And um, what, is, what should you do? Things like cuddling and hugging. Ha. Um, Coddling yes, I, and hugging. Yeah, or, well, or even we. being cuddled or hugged by, even by your parents. And your spouse. Or your spouse. Yeah, it helps. Um, eating certain foods, protein rich, protein rich, rich foods um, also helps. Getting that vitamin D that we're all talking about nowadays with you know, COVID, go, and, and the sun, walking in the sunlight, things like this, little things like that uh, help. When during the uh, NSARS program, I put up my number and my details out there for people who are going through anxiety. I got so many calls and so many people were just going through anxiety because mm. of the, what mm. they heard yes. and all that. Yes. And we tell people things like just even breathing, practicing your breathing, taking deep breaths uh, through, uh, through your nose and exhaling through your mouth, just learning to practice things like that. Like we said, exercise, watch okay. a comedy, have okay. some dark chocolate. They're so... Little Simple tips. And we, as we Those say, were lots and lots if of tips. the symptoms persist after two weeks, <laughs> then see a mental yes. health so uh, those, practitioner. Those, those were lots and lots of wonderful tips. And yeah. I do have to quickly say before they kick me off, <laughs> is that I 100% I, I agree with you because I'd been feeling a bit despondent and melancholy over the last few days. And when I woke up this morning, I posted a video on my, on my Instagram handle. When I woke up this morning, I listened to Tracy Chapman. And I exercised for 30 minutes. And that made a huge difference. Yeah. 
you know, I forced myself that I must exercise. I must make it a priority. Yeah. And that is something that I'm slowly beginning to cultivate. And it made a huge difference to my, to my mood, to my exactly. state of being. Sure. You know, and it helped me get out of that feeling mm -hmm. a, a bit down in the dumps. You know, and when you talk about celebrating wins, my brother is an advocate for celebrating wins. And he's always telling me when I'm feeling a bit, a bit down in the dumps, he's always saying to me, celebrate your wins, your little wins. So when I do something good today, like two days ago I drank, Two liters of water, I said, that's a win. Yeah. So those are, those are wins. By the time yeah. the wins pile up, you begin to feel better about feel yourself. Better, yeah. you know, so, so I really do understand what you're saying. And I am so, so thankful to have you here with us today. Thank you. And for some of the tips that you've given us and, and some of the insights you've given us, I'm really, really grateful. Um, to get more information and speak to someone about any feelings of depression or potential depression or, or you just want clarification, um, you can reach out to any of our three guests today. Buki Lamid, her Instagram ham handle is on the screen, Temidayo Seriki, and my dear Mr. Kanimo Ekong. They've all said that they are happy to talk to anybody who needs to speak to somebody. Next with us today, as usual, is Dolly Phillips for our fitness segment. <laughs>